there's some some information here that I've learned not only as a pocket carrier but as a revolver carrier. There's a whole host of information that I'm going to give you from my perspective and I'm willing to bet a lot of this information is going to be kind of new to you. You'll kind of think, well I never thought of that like that before. That's basically how it's going to be. I'm going to tell you my experience. I'm going to tell you a lot of different things you didn't think about. I'm also going to basically show you how I how I do tactical, tactical reloads. I call them practical reloads. <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of issues with reloading revolvers. People talk about a lot how slow it is, etc. And there's a few other things to think about. Now, first thing I'm going to say is that I choose to go more practical than tactical, rather than tactical and then practical. I find it, it, it much easier to just live my my normal daily life in a particular way that makes things easier. What I'm going to show you and tell you though is my particular way of doing things and you may be completely different in your method and that's absolutely fine. You know this is just my own opinion, my own perspective, my own experience with things in the nature of pocket carry and revolvers. Now I do carry an HKS speed loader. Right here, five rounds. I've had several of these and I've really liked them. They work really well for me and I've never had them fall out accidentally yet at the same time they release very quickly, very easily. So I tend to like those as speed loaders. I know there's a lot of other brands but that's particularly what I like. And then I carry my 342 PD in my pocket here. And this DeSantis, I don't know what it was called, I think it's Nemesis or something like that. It's been an excellent holster. I, I've carried it for the last two and a half years or so in my pocket. It's been a good holster. But I'm going to show you, first of all, let's go over pocket draw. This is something that most people get wrong as far as they watch my videos and they say, well, you know what, Gun Sam? You can't get that gun out of your pocket quick enough because of how tightly it fits in your pants. So you need to tell the attacker to, to hold on and give you a minute. Now there may be a little bit of a challenge when it comes to drawing out of a vehicle. It can still be done when you're sitting. It's a little bit more challenging, but when you're standing up, it's very, very easy. And the thing I want to say, first of all, that the many people may not think about when it comes to pocket carry is you have to be very very picky on your grips particularly I like finger grooves in my grips and there's a very specific reason it has nothing to do with how the gun shoots it's because when you have a finger groove and this is kind of a large grip for a gun like this by the way uh, the original one also had finger grooves and it's because this is a nice sharp point right here and it gives you something to snag on on purpose. You might say, well, why do I need to do that? I just, you know, get a whole purchase on my gun, I draw it. And that's where people that don't pocket carry don't understand what's going on because they think of on their strong side whatnot, they get the grip on the gun, they grab the gun. With pocket carry, you cannot put your hand in your pocket and just draw it. I'm going to put this gun in here. This is what people imagine it is like to pocket draw. Hold on a minute, attacker. That's not what it is. What it is, is when you have a very tight pocket like this, and it conceals it really well because it is very tight, um, what you got to do is you got to maximize your, your fingers going in the pocket, just your fingers to pull it out and then reposition the grip. That's really the only way, effective way to do it. So you need to have finger grooves and or stippling on the sides of the, of the grip, whether they be wood or rubber. Some people say they don't like rubber because it snags. I personally never had any issues with, with rubber snagging. But basically this is what it looks like. Really quick, I'm gonna pull it, I'm out. So you gotta kinda practice that pinch grab with your, with your thumb and your pointer finger or however you wanna do it and then pull it out. I'll do it kind of very slow motion to show you what I, what I did here. This is completely concealed by the pocket. Basically I go in and that, that, that uh, finger groove and the stippling on the side of the grip allows me to put 
my pointer finger in there, snag it, I'm pulling it out like this. As I'm bringing it up, I'm repositioning it. I'm able to do that quite quickly. So there isn't going to be an issue with um, getting it out when I need it. And not only that, but if you already got your hand in your pocket a little bit, you can actually get a couple of fingers, not your whole hand necessarily, but a couple of fingers on the gun like so. If you think something something bad is going to happen, and you can be even that much quicker prepared. Like I can have it kind of like this, not really conspicuous, and then I'm out. You know, my grip is a little bit low right there. Lower than what I would want. I got my finger on the trigger here, but it's a revolver, so that's pretty safe to do. Um, and that's kind of one thing I can incorporate into my draws. I don't really worry about my finger slipping in. I'm not pulling with my finger, I'm just bringing it in and positioning it in that trigger guard so that that will shave off a split second from from having to fire the gun. Now if I did that with let's say my little LCP I would not put my finger in there. Now, the next thing here is going to be reloading. This is something there's a lot more that goes into this than what people realize. This HKS speed loader and compared to this gun here there is no room for error here. I'll put this thing in here. It is the exact same size as that cylinder. So it basically rubs on the side of the, the frame of that gun. And there is no room. Now, from a tactical standpoint, you would think that it would be better to have it on your strong side. And there would be an advantage to that. But what I say to do is to go out to the range, fire off some shots, and challenge yourself to wherever you got that speed loader to reload it. Do what you would do naturally. Don't do something that feels really foreign. And then when you find out what you do naturally, after you figure out what you do naturally, work on speeding that process up. Because we're not talking about like competition shooting here where we're trying to do all this, you know. We're talking about daily, everyday life, where you're trying to be very practical and still be very effective with your weapon. So for me, because I carry in this side the opposite front pocket, I have to do a little bit of a switch up. Now what the what the original, I don't know what you call it, there's a technical term for it, where you fire your rounds, you empty them out, and then you switch to your weak hand and use your, your strong hand to draw, reload, and the speed loader, drop them in, close it. Now I do something that's a little bit different, but this is just basically what I do when I challenge myself. What I do is I'll fire my rounds, and because they're on the opposite side of the pocket, the opposite pocket, I'll pull the gun up, I'll empty my rounds, and before I switch hands, I'll go and I'll grab my speed loader out of my pocket, and then I basically set it where I, it would need to go. And if it doesn't go in immediately, I just hold it with my strong thumb. Then I do the switch. And you see right here, I'm, I'm struggling even just to show you here. But that's the other point. Is that you have to be pretty, pretty particular with your ammo choice when it comes to the speed loader. A revolver, obviously, you have way more choices than a semi-automatic. So in a revolver, you can really have a very effective weapon with the rounds that are in it if you can solve the problem in five shots. But if you need a reload, sometimes whatever rounds are in here might not be right. I mean these have slight slight scallops on the side and they actually do kind of kind of snag a little bit when you try to turn them. Something like critical defense also will have its own similar problem because the tips of those are like pencil erasers. They want to drag, they want to snag. Here I got some Silver tips, these have their own issues here because they're kind of snaggy. And then there's something else you got to think about if you do intend on pocket carrying a reload in the pocket. These right here have a nice, nice arc to them, a nice angle, almost like full metal jacket flat points, and these aren't going to snag as much. However, these have an exposed lead tip. 
And do you want exposed soft lead in the inside of your pocket if you do in, intend on carrying just in your jeans? Now, if you had your own particular pocket, some people like to carry the reload in, a, in the cell phone pocket. And if that's the only thing you ever put in there, yeah, it might be okay. But for me, personally, I carry it in my front pocket. And there may be a different day where I use my jeans for something else. You know, I don't want to have exposed lead inside my jeans. It, it would be fine inside the cylinder of the gun. But not my jeans here. So I know what you guys are saying, do a, do a reload here, and I will, I'll, I'll put some live rounds in here. I don't have any close neighbors, and the kids are all gone today, so nobody's in the house. So what I'm going to do here, <clears throat> without pulling the trigger, I'm just going to show a quick demonstration of, of how I would do this. And I'm going to be using these full metal jacket flat points, because out of all the ammo I have, these are the only ones that won't snag when they're going in. Basically, I'll have it in there. I'll have my my revolver in this <clears throat> in this packet. I'll fish it out with my my finger and my thumb. Pretend that I'm shooting. I'll empty those rounds and I'll go for a reload. It will look like this. Pull it out. Boom, 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 boom. Empty them out. Switch hands. It's not going in, but I'm going to switch ready. So that's what I do by nature. So what I do is I train around that because when a stressful situation happens, you know, take this example for, take this for an example. Back in the day for forever, they trained police officers to do this type of thing where they step back kind of a weaver position to try to minimize the shape of their body, they're the profile, so they're not taking direct shots from the enemy, from the bad guy. This type of thing. They train to draw, step back, shoot like this. Well, they did a study where they basically compiled thousands and thousands of video cam dashboard footage of different shootings. I don't know the exact details of this whole thing. But basically what they found out from studying that is that even though every cop was trained to do this, no cops ever did that. They got in the confrontation, they pulled their gun, they were straight out isosceles every time, even though they were not trained to do that. Because by nature, a human being is just wants to face their threat if they're going to, you know, fight. They're going to face their threat. So this whole years of training doing this, when the real time came, they actually just went like this. So I say it's a good idea to, to basically do what you do by nature and train that way. And just try to shave off some of the, the hang-ups when it comes to that type of training. And before I leave you with some of this experience I, I, I'm sharing with you today, I'm going to show you a little clip that I did out in the woods a couple days ago. And the thing about this clip <clears throat> is that I was kind of showing off for the camera, so I, when I emptied my reloads I kind of did this type of thing. And that's not what I would normally do. But you'll see, basically, that I could be a fairly accurate and effective rounds on target and a reload. So, enjoy this uh, quick little outro of live action. And as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching. I'll see what kind of ridiculous reload I can do. So here we go. <laughs> Pull it out. Dump those out. Fairly doable.